Today we dive into the wild and wacky world of the sovereign citizen with a compilation for the ages. As we have for you, a trio of outlandish cases that will leave you questioning if this is reality. First up, we have Judge Wolf presiding over a case that highlights the absurdity of sovereign citizen tactics. The defendant, adamant in his refusal to acknowledge his identity, claims to be appearing as the attorney of fact, whatever that means. Will Judge Wolf be swayed by this convoluted argument? Or will he see through the smoke and mirrors? Next, we move to Judge Washington's court, where a notorious and familiar face amongst several Michigan judges, returns with his signature sovereign citizen rhetoric. Will Judge Washington demand accountability, or will the defendant's antics continue unchecked? Our final case brings us before Judge Perkins, where chaos ensues as a seasoned sovereign citizen returns with a vengeance. Claiming to have been locked out of the Zoom court proceedings during his previous appearance, this defendant now engages in a heated clash with Judge Perkins. Will order be restored, allowing Judge Perkins to make a ruling, or will the tumultuous proceedings lead to a trial by jury? Stay tuned to find out. Right. Good morning. We're going to go through the docket as quickly as we can so that we can start on the jail docket. 2021 CL19158, State versus Matthew Aldridge. Are you Matthew Aldridge? Uh, I'm the attorney of fact for Matthew Aldridge. You were what? The attorney of fact. Attorney what? Um, fact. Attorney of fact. And what does that mean? Is authorization to do legal work. Are you a licensed attorney? No, I'm simply an attorney of fact. Okay. And does that mean you have a power of attorney? What is your name? What is your name? My name? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't have a Brother, you don't have a name? Pardon? I'm an attorney of fact for the respondent in the area. Well, <clears throat> let me explain to you. Only an attorney at law can stand in court and represent a criminal defendant. And to do so otherwise violates the criminal law statutes of the state of Tennessee and could land someone who attempts to represent themselves as an attorney at law in serious trouble. I understand what you're saying. I understand you're saying an attorney in fact. And what I want you to understand is, is that if you have a power of attorney, then you need to demonstrate that power of attorney. Do you have a legal document called a power of attorney? No, I do not at this time. Okay. Then you don't have any authority to act on behalf of Matthew Aldridge in this court. You have no legal authority, nor do you have any uh, authority through a legal document to represent or, or to act on behalf of Matthew Aldridge. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just let me file Show it to the bailiff and he'll show it to me. Oh, what? Apparently there's a copy here. <clears throat> All right. This is in the state of Tennessee of Cheatham County and Chantry Court, which is filed in the wrong county, because in the wrong court, because this is circuit court. You just be quiet. You go to the courthouse, it comes up. You need to listen to me instead of talking, okay? This is a challenge to the standing. The Supreme Court of the United States has stated that no corporation has standing anything to man. <clears throat> and then there's a quotation for a Rundle versus Delaware Raritan Canal Company. And then it said, as well as it being a maximum of law, citing certain uh, Latin uh, phrases, Dissimilar things ought not to be joined by a definition of Black's Law dic Dictionary. So the respondent in error requires that the state of Tennessee Incorporated and Cheatham County Chantry Court prove their standing to proceed against a man in any court of law. You have 15 calendar days to prove your standing or forever yield to estoppel, waiver, and fraud, and cease and desist this proceeding immediately. More time is available if requested. And then this was signed by Matthew O'Neill Aldridge. Is that your signature? That's the uh, signature. All right. Well, I find that Matthew Neil Aldridge has failed to appear uh, in personally in this court for the plea day on his case, which was set for trial tomorrow. And as a result, you have no standing, sir, under the the uh, 
what I know what you're trying to do is to try to use the sovereign citizen approach to this situation. And I'm simply telling you that you do not have the right to represent Matthew Neil Aldridge. If you are, in fact, Matthew Neil Aldridge, then you need to say so and stop this nonsense because that what you're attempting to do has no legal effect. You cannot challenge the criminal law or the, circ or the jurisdiction of this court by simply filing some legal mumbo jumbo having to do with civil litigation. That has civil litigation in it. It is not a criminal case that you have cited. So it has no effect on this court regarding the criminal statutes of this court. This court is empowered under the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the state of Tennessee and by the duly elected citizens of Cheatham County to empower and enforce the laws of the state of Tennessee. And that is what I'm going to do regarding Matthew Lynn Aldridge. <clears throat> Mr. Aldridge is uh, set for today to appear in court personally on a, what we call our last plea day before his trial date tomorrow. <clears throat> Is that an Article 3 trial? To what? Would that be an Article 3 trial? A trial by jury with jury? It would be a trial by jury. Certainly, it would be. But I don't know who you are. And I don't think you have any authority if you are not Matthew Lynn Aldridge to appear before this court. And you're wasting valuable time to all of these other citizens who are here today. So when I'm talking, you stop talking. No, uh, you will when I'm finished talking. You're wasting the court's time by doing this, and I'm just simply instructing you that if you are, in fact, Matthew Lynn Aldridge, then this is your last day to settle your case. The trial date is set for tomorrow, and unfortunately, it will not go forward because of the fact that I have a conflict and I have, a, I have to be in Stewart County on a civil matter. So we're going to assign a new trial date for Matthew Lynn Aldridge. <clears throat> General, we're going to need to set a trial date in July of term. July 15th. I'm sorry. July 15th. July 15th. All right. To uh, Matthew Aldridge and the individual standing before me whose name must not be altered, uh, must not be all uttered, um, then we will set a July 15th trial date for Mr. Aldridge. <clears throat> Your, whatever this document is that you have filed um, is in fact invalid because it does not cite any valid criminal statute and therefore um, deny whatever that might be in the way of a motion. The trial date will be July 15th, the last day for Mr. Aldridge to enter a plea or go to trial will be July the 8th. July the 8th. Now, <clears throat> we're going to give you a card. If you are in fact Matthew Aldridge and you're just playing games with the court regarding this uh, nonsense that you filed, then you may get his card and you may go on about your business. If you are not Matthew Aldridge, then I would suggest to you, you relay to Mr. Aldridge that he must appear on July the 8th or a bond revocation will take place and his case will be set, uh, will take place with him in jail, incarcerated on the 15th. That's the judgment. Mr. Eric Martin, please unmute your device well and state your name. Can you hear me? I can now, sir. Capital E, lowercase r-i-c, of the, capital M, lowercase a-r-t-i-n family, a living sovereign, one of the people. Assistant Public Defender Davi Lebo as standby counsel. Thank you. We're here for a pretrial today. And a bench warrant is still outstanding for Mr. Martin. That's correct, Your Honor. As it relates to the pretrial, uh, I believe the last time that we saw Mr. Martin, it was on December 7th. And he had some difficulty viewing the video that we had sent via flash drive. I encouraged him to get with his standby counsel, who at that time was APD Sandra White. Uh, he did not appear at that next hearing, but she did confirm that they had spoken um, almost every day and um, that he they had reviewed the video. So my understanding is that Mr. Martin has been able to view the complete discovery, including all of the media. Um, I know that we were headed to a jury trial, so um, I will leave it to Mr. Martin to um, confirm that so we can get going with selection. 
Mr. Martin. Yeah, I looked at the video. Uh, and I saw the, uh, yeah, I looked at the video and I also filed some uh, demands uh, to dismiss some self-incrimination based on the video, along with some others that have not been decided on, um, which uh, should be decided on before any trial schedule or anything else. Mr. Martin, I've decided on all the motions that you've brought before me. And the way this works is if I make a motion ruling, then the party making that motion has to prepare the order. So when you complain about no orders being prepared, that's your not preparing them, sir. I mean, not prepared. I, 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 think, I think my words were very clear. I understand what you're saying. You're saying because I didn't style it as a motion or something? What are you saying? I'm saying that I already ruled on them. So when I rule on them, it's up to the party to prepare them. That's you. I did prepare them specifically. My demand to dismiss. Prepare it, sir. You did not prepare my ruling order, which was that they are denied. I mean, they're, they're denied, but you didn't rule on it. How does okay. that happen? Do you have anything else? You Yes, Ms. McDuffie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. I did just want to clarify one point because Mr. Martin, I think, um, mentioned that he had um, he wanted to move to dismiss based on incriminating statements after he had reviewed the video. So I don't know if there's a sort of Miranda issue he's raising or not. But I would just, um, I guess, for the record, remind Mr. Martin that when he appeared for the hearing on the five documents that he filed, demands, motions, whatever you want to call those. Um, Mr. Martin, during that hearing, uh, rattled off the fact that he did not have a valid license, his vehicle wasn't registered, and he didn't have insurance and didn't feel like he needed to do any of those things. So if there are any incriminating statements that would relate to the counts in this case, he has made them multiple times, including on the record, in this court at his own hearing. So if any statements were suppressed from that media, they would still come in from statements he's made in court. Well, I object to the third one is self-incriminating. Uh, as I pointed out, state in my demands to dismiss, as the U.S. Supreme Court said, that uh, license ain't necessary. We're not using the streets for profit, which the cops have no evidence. Mr. Martin, you need, you're going to need to speak up if you want to have a transcript of this because it's not. I'm speaking Let's up. See. Let's see, Heather. Can you can you bring the microphone closer to you, Mr. Martin? Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm sorry. You kind of a little closer now. How's that? Is that any better? How's that? How's that? Yeah, please keep talking in the same volume that you're using right now, so we can hear it. Well, I object to what she just said about I made some self-incriminating statements. That's not true because as I pointed out in my demands to dismiss, the law is in my favor, the higher supreme law, such as the law statute, which is supreme law of the land under Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution, federal statutes override state statutes, along with the Packer versus Banton case I uh, cited and sent a uh, quote from the law book uh, on that clearly said from the U.S. Supreme Court that the people have a right to use the roads, not a privileged right. And uh, as long as you're not using the streets for profit, which I wasn't doing, and there was no evidence, and the cops have no evidence of that. So I was exercising my right to travel, didn't need a license, insurance, registration, none of that. So uh, nothing self incriminating about what I say. There's no legit case here. And uh, which is why I beat a, a case on the same exact issue in Southgate. Same exact issue. Prosecutor moved to dismiss it because they know they had, they had no winning case. The higher law is in my favor. The state law is unconstitutional. That's assuming everyone's driving a motor vehicle when they're not. And I'm working to change that state law. And I'm going to. I already got a federal lawsuit filed on it in the Detroit courthouse on Lafayette Boulevard. Right now, I got to fight one about filing fees, but when I overcome that, they'll be, they'll be deciding on the merits, and uh, I will be winning on that issue, and the state law will be changed. It's going to stop making the presumption, the state statute law, that everyone's driving a motor vehicle, even when it's not for profit. So that's the problem with the state law. It's unconstitutional. Cops are, cops are blindly following that, 
acting as if that, and then the so-called courts are acting on that presumption. No, everyone who's driving a motor vehicle, they need a license insurance. Well, no, they don't. They're not doing it for profit. They're exercising the right to travel. So, you want to stop it. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. Since Mr. Martin has, again, um, made those same statements that I referred to earlier, and this prosecutor will not be dismissing anything in this case, we will be proceeding to trial if he doesn't want to plead to it. Um, let me ask the court if I could. Um, are we ready to set this? I understand he has a desire to file an endless amount of lawsuits and grievances and motions, but the court has indicated we are past that point. Are we ready to set this case for jury selection or no? Yes, we are. Thank you. All right, any motion that was just made, whatever he's entitling that is denied. Well, how do you, um, so you deny some, you don't even know what it is. But anyways, you still have, there, there's still demands uh, to dismiss that haven't been ruled on as a matter of law, which what a lot of them are, such as the state as a party, I filed a demand to dismiss because the state is the party here. Thank you. The state in, in this court, so-called court has no jurisdiction as indicated, as I indicated in uh, in my demand under the U.S. Constitution, only the sir, U.S. Sir, I'm not hearing those motions again. On October 26, I made a ruling on all of those motions, and you have not prepared the the order to that effect. We're done with those motions. It's in order. Is that the so, major selection, Your Honor? Or no, no, it's not. We're going to do a July 25th uh, jury. Uh, July 25th final settlement conference. Mm -hmm. Okay. August 9th. July 25th, 2024. Hold on, let me uh, write this down here. Hold on one second. One second, please. And I'm also going to make a, a demand right now for a compensation also for this uh, making me proceed against my will under threatened arrest. To, these so-called court proceedings uh, in violation of my 13th Amendment right against slavery. Um, all these court proceedings are against my right against slavery. So I'm entitled to compensation for, uh, for all the uh, court proceedings that I had to uh, make in this case. Otherwise, I could have possibly been arrested. So it was only under threatened arrest. It wasn't by consent willingly. Mr. Martin knows that the jury selection is in person, correct? I haven't finished telling him all of that yet. I'm getting the dates. I'm okay. going to tell him in just one second. Mm -hmm. All right. The uh, final settlement conference in this case is going to be on July 25th, 2024 at 11 a.m. And that is on Zoom. The August 9th jury selection is in person. And that's at 8.30 a.m. on August 9th. Hold on, July 25th, 24, right? 8 p.m. a.m., you said, right? It's at 11 a.m., sir. You know, I want to be understood. I'm not um, willingly giving up my right to be one of the sovereign people and uh, by this jury, but you know. Jury selection is August 9th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. You said 24th? It's at 8.30 a.m. I meant to say 8.30 a.m. You said the 24th now or you said the 25th? August 9th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. is the jury selection, sir. I thought you just said July, I mean, uh, 7.25-24. That is the final settlement conference. That is on Zoom. Hold on, I got uh, one thing at the top. Okay, now, now let's do the, uh, what's the other date now, August? What else? August 9th. Okay. At 8.30. Okay. 8.30, and what's that considered, uh, what's that called there? Jury selection, sir. Now, is it which is in person here now? The, the 725 24, is that something I have to be there in person for? I mean, for the fourth the time, Mr. Here. Martin, please listen. The first event, which is in July, 
is on Zoom. The last event is in person. So we got it. Well, we're saying a whole bunch of work, you know. All right, we're done right. today. Have a good day, Mr. Martin. Bye bye. The court will call the case of the state. Appearance for the record, please. Chair Rick Harris, on behalf of Mr. Lewis, please state your name for the record. Uh, I'm not. I don't have an attorney. I'm representing myself. I articulated that at the last hearing. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. All right. Today is the date. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Today is the date and time set for a ring on the bench warrant. I'm going to enter not guilty plea on his behalf. I'm going to give him a zero dollar bond. Uh, Mr. Lewis, you said you were here last time. Uh, why? Why? Why did you miss your date? I actually didn't miss the date. I actually sent you a motion today to show you a uh, proof that I was actually in the hearing and I was locked out of the hearing after an hour of waiting. Um, as well as I sent you a motion for dismissal as well. Um, I sent it last week. Like, yes, I sent it last week, but I resent it today and I sent it in a uh, Zoom chat as well to the prosecutor, the clerk reporter, as well as the clerk. I, I didn't get that motion, either of those motions. Uh, if you is there any way you, you you have availability look at the Zoom message right? I sent it to not only your email but the Zoom chat I'm as well. At, I need it in my email. I don't I don't have I don't. I, I don't send it twice. Zoom. I can tell you my email if you want to search it, but you should have it twice in your email. I'll resend What's this. What's uh, your email? What's your email? Uh, First C H R I S L E W I E at Gmail. Chris Chris C H R I S L right. Yes, E W I E. I don't have it. Okay, I'm gonna resend it at the moment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my email address in the chat and uh, make you know, this. I'll put my email so you'll have it and send that send that to me. And uh, we will I have, have an opportunity to read that. Um, I'll confirm that you sent. I'll wait to confirm that you sent it to me, and I'll give you a date. The next court date is going to be a free trial date on May the 28th, 2024 at 830. You need to get a copy of that to the city attorney as well. Yeah, uh, I just that that prosecutor as well. Daya Mason, is that her? Yes. Prosecutor? Yes, I did just send her attachment. If she could send me a, a confirmation that she received it. Get it, get it to her email address. So, Ms. Okay. Mason, you put your email address in the chat as well so Mr. Lewis can get you a copy of that. I really uh, appreciate try. that. I'm going to wait on that. Once I confirm that you gave me that, uh, I will uh, recall the case. All right, let's Thank pass you. that matter. All right, the gentleman on the Motorola. All right, um, Mr. Uh, Lewis, I have not received anything um, in my email address. So, uh, sent it to the same email the prosecutor uh told me that she did receive it as well i'm not sure uh, I, I haven't received it yet okay so I, I, need sent to it in your I sent it in your okay. i haven't received it yet i mean i don't know what you want me to say i sent it three times sir i have a All screenshot right. to show you that that it was delivered well you can't have a screenshot to show it was delivered to me because i, mean, I haven't but, received it I'm sitting there looking at my email right now he, uh check possibly your uh, spam or I don't know. But the prosecutor did receive and I sent y'all in the same email together. With the same email that you sent me today with the same one I already sent you twice. Okay. Right. Uh, I've not received it. All right. The city of Detroit versus Teresa Mercedes Gray, case number U3812817. Appearance for the record, please. Elwood S. Berry Jr. on behalf of the defendant. All right, thank you. I suggest you check that email address. There's a period in there. I don't know if you put the period in there, Mr. Lewis, but I have not received it yet. I'm not sure if you have access to your Zoom inbox, but I'm showing you screenshots as well as I attached the actual motion in the Zoom as well. If you could see. I'm not it. looking at the Zoom. I, I can't print it out from the Zoom. I'm looking at my email address. I want it in well, my email address. Well, I did send it to your court reporter. Can they print it out possibly? They possibly can if they have it. All right. Well, can they confirm that they did have it, that they did receive it in their Zoom inbox since they're not on the call? Sir? 
Sir, did you send it to the court reporter or the clerk? Um, I sent it to both, actually. I sent it to all the officers of the court today. Well, I'm going to send you my email in the chat. I sent oh. mine on. still haven't got it, What's so he's doing something wrong with what the email. Oh, well, I'm not sure if uh, if the prosecutor, Miss Mason, is still on call. If she can forward it to me, that would be helpful. Right, because she did receive it, and your name is attached to the same email that you just confirmed that she received it with. So if she could tell me that I, there was an error at some you know, with the email, I would appreciate it. Dia Mesa, can you forward the email from Chris Lewis to me, please? Thank really you. Appreciate that. City of Detroit, I strike that. This is the state of Michigan versus Thomas Darrell Griffin. Case number SX4329571. Appearance for the record. Let's, uh, let's go back on the record with Mr. Christopher Lewis. Um, I, 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 do re I have received this, this motion, and I read the first couple of lines of it, um, and that I'm not concerned necessarily about the April, March 18th incident. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what happened on that day, but you are here now, um, so we'll move, we'll move forward. Excuse me, sir. I heard you say that you only read the first couple of lines. Is there any yes. way we could possibly take another case and get the chance to uh, read the entire thing? It's only no, two I pages. Can't. I'm not going to read this entire thing today. It's only like three paragraphs, the entire thing. The rest are just case sightings. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deny the motion. I will set the matter... Is there anybody get a written? Can, you give, can I get a written articulation as to why you're denying the motion? I'm denying the motion um, because I would just appreciate a written excuse. Can I get a written not, articulation? I can't give it to you in writing. I will, what Are I will we on do, record? Are we on record? We're, we're on record. Okay. Uh, is this court bound by the U.S. Constitution and Supreme Court rulings? Yes. Okay, you were denying my motion when I uh, said that I have Fourth Amendment violations, and you're saying that you're denying my motion without looking into it or granting me a hearing to go over my motion or give me an articulation as to why, a written excuse as to why. I want to make sure that that's what you're saying to me. You're asking uh, uh, for a change of venue. I'm, I'm denying I'm saying that. I'm, I'm saying that, I uh, know there's a motion for dismissal, and I'm saying that you as an Article yeah. 1 judge under the Commerce Clause, if you're not going to uh, uphold my due process and my Fourth Amendment, I'm saying that maybe we could change venues where I could get a real judge. Okay. I'm denying a motion to dismiss, okay? I'll set, what I'll set is I'll set a trial date for you so you can be heard on that, on that type of form. I insist that the court give me a, 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 a written excuse as to why you're denying my motion so I can take that to the tenor, okay? What well, you can insist all you want to. Okay, you get a I, I appreciate that. But I'm, I'm telling you, you're telling me today why you're not going to look into it or give me a hearing as so I can go over the evidence that I have to present to, to go with my motion. You don't want to do any of that. So I'm just asking that you can give me a written excuse that I could go take and complain against you on. Because that, that, that's violating my due process. You didn't even give me the chance to say we're going to schedule an a evidentiary hearing or something like that. You're going to sit up here and, and disregard that when I made genuine claims and put genuine evidence in there. Overwhelming. So at the end of the day, uh, like I said, there's no crime. This is a fraudulent charge. Y'all don't have, there's no suspect. There's no, y'all suspecting for no crime. There's no victim, no losses. Okay. And in a minute, it's going to be malicious prosecution. So I'm, I'm asking you to dismiss this charge or change the venue. And if you refuse to do that, I'm asking you for a written excuse so I can take it to the tenor, sir. That's what I'm telling you. Because if not, I'm going to go to the tenor without it and let them know that you refuse to give me a, a, a written excuse and you refuse to give me an evidentiary hearing, but you just straight denied it. When you just five minutes ago, you said you didn't even read it. Now you just denied it. That's conflict of interest. That's bias. That's all that. So uh, let's let's put it all on record. If you feel just as strongly as you feel, give me a written excuse. If not, let's change venue. Because you're an Article One judge under the Commerce Clause. This conflict of interest, you only here to make money, man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no crime. Not, wait, ain't no, ain't no I'm victim not your man. No loss, bro. I'm not your, 
Listen, hey, listen, hey, I'm not look, saying, look, 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 sir. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. Respectfully, respectfully, you're Article One judge under the Commerce Clause. You've been on the bench since what, 21? A couple years? You need to talk to somebody. I'm asking you to give me an evidentiary hearing to go over my motion for dismissal with the overwhelming evidence or change venue. Because if not, I'm going straight to the tenant right after this. And that's on you, sir. You had this. You did this. Oh, all right. All right. Now I'll let you speak. straight like that. No. That's all we need. I don't want to hear any more. All right, from cool. You. It's cool. You made your record. I appreciate you made it. Your record. You, this is this due, this due process. This is a due process violation. This is a due process violation right now. And the way y'all tried to railroad me when I was ready to argue my trial. I told you I was here to argue my trial. Y'all locked me out. Mr. Now Mr. you're trying Lewis. to start the process over. Mr. They're Mr. not Lewis. prepared to present a case. I'm telling you. Mr. They're not prepared Harris, to present Mr. an injured party. So what are we doing? Listen. 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 Please do not say any more. You've already made your record. I've given you that opportunity. If you continue on, especially interrupting me while I'm talking, because I didn't interrupt you while you were talking. I'm not your bro. I'm not your man. And I'm not to be interrupted when I'm speaking. I gave you the respect and the right to speak. Just because you're unsatisfied with the, with the way that I ruled, then that's not my problem. You, you okay, take whatever recourse. Wait a minute. Let me say it. Let me say it. You take whatever recourse that you feel that is necessary. Now, what I can do, Mr. Lewis, is I can set you a jury trial date. And at that jury trial date, you will have an opportunity to represent yourself or do whatever you want to do and put all your proofs on the record by a jury of your peers, and you can argue it that way, okay? I appreciate now, that, but I was still like a written. Um, you, get, you, you order the transcript. You order the transcript. It's in the transcript. The, you, you asked me to read the uh, couple of paragraphs that you made. Most of the paragraphs was referencing the uh, incident on March 18th as you, and, I, and, and, and I'm not even debating or disputing it. I said, I'm not concerned about March 18th or any missed date. Um, I said that the most of what you're saying is in the, it, 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 it's it's not, uh, you know, I'm not even going to hold you to that, but um, in paragraph two, uh, I, uh, moreover, I want to emphasize that the initial charge against me in this court is fraudulent. I, I don't know that to be the case. That's why I'm giving you an opportunity to, uh, to, 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 uh, to have a jury trial and they can make the determination. Neither the complaining witness or the prosecution is prepared at any point of this case to present an injured party or any reported damages slash losses. So it becomes abundantly clear that every proceeding taking place is strictly an attempt to seek funds where there is no crime uh, and not seek real justice. So we are giving you real justice because if you say that there's been no crime, then you have a right to a trial. And that's what I'm giving you. So I was assaulted, detained, and my property illegally searched and seized with no suspicion of crime at the hands of the complaining witness, Joshua Martin, and assisting officers. I do not consent to these fraudulent proceedings and demand that the court dismiss the charge immediately with the appropriate remedies um, and I'm just dis I'm dismissing the motion uh, uh, on, on based on that because I am giving you a proper forum to argue your case um, uh, uh, or allow me the right to uh, change the proper venue of the federal court where my U.S. constitutional rights will be upheld and not disregarded by Article One judge under the Commerce Clause. I don't understand that um, of the United States Constitution. Indicate indicating a clear conflict of interest. I do not wish to proceed with this matter. You don't have to proceed any further because I'm dismissing the case. He did cite some case law. Um, uh, it was at uh, Sherrard v. Cullen, uh, 481 Federal 2nd, 945. For a crime to exist, there must be an injured party, uh, 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 corpus delecti. 
there can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because of the U.S. constitutional right. Um, Louisville versus Motley, 211 U.S. 149 uh, South uh, 29 S. Period Court CT 42. Any tribunal court finds absence of jurisdiction over a person or subject matter, the case must be dismissed. The accuser bears the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So I'm, I'm, I'm dismissing the motion, all right? So you, you want a trial date? Give me a, 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 a jury trial date, please, Ms. Mendes. And you can get a copy of that record uh, uh, on um, of, of what we just made uh, by uh, going through the proper channels of the court to get the uh, court reporter to produce that record. I can't even get the court reporter to respond to my voice messages or you to respond to my email, the sir. He's not going to respond to your voice message. The court reporter is going to respond to you coming down. The district told me to call it. her today that I was locked out of my trial date. I had a scheduled trial. The court told me to call her that day and I called her that day and I, she still hasn't responded. So I'm trying to see if you, if the court that you work for is trying to tell me think, how the appropriate channels and y'all about... doing it different in y'all court, what am I to do? I you think know? you're talking about, I think you're talking about the court clerk and not the court reporter. This, this, this is the state. Yeah, I was told to call the clerk the day that I was locked okay. out, the moment I was locked so out. So we moved past that Getting locked no, out that was my trial date. Yes, yeah, so I'm How giving you another. How soon can I get another trial date, sir? How soon can I get another trial date? That's what I'm asking. That's what we're trying to do now. I'm giving you a jury trial. A jury trial. I'm not going to. I'm going to let the jury of his peers hear what he has to say. It looks like it's going to be July the 23rd. Before you say that again, it's not. Just verify it before you say it. Please, the dates. Okay, I'm just checking. I know, but you're thinking I'm one Okay. Good day. Yes. July 23rd, 2024, at uh, at 9 a.m. Um, July 23rd. Uh, yeah, 2024 at 9 a.m. We'll have a final pretrial the day before. Um, all well, why would we need a final pretrial? Why we need a final Because I, I said I wanted one. But that's how you protect parties. your interest. You protecting your interest, and you're gonna dismiss it on that day. So you're trying to play with me. You could dismiss oh it today. God. You literally, this you literally, is, look, you literally, but the final pretrial eight thirty. This violate my due process. You can't even give me a written excuse. But you're gonna all this whole. Mr. Lewis, I know you don't want counsel, but. Is it possible we can talk in the breakout? Excuse me, ma'am. I do. Excuse me, ma'am. I am in pro se. I'm in pro se. Go wherever you want to. Final pretrial of July 22nd. And trial date is going to be July 23rd. All the parties must appear on the final pretrial day. And the jury, and that can be on Zoom. And the next day, the trial jury trial date is in person. Have a very good day, Mr. Green. Best of luck to you. That's not my name. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Lewis, I'm sorry. Have a very good day. Best of luck to you. All right. Let's go move on. Put him out the room, please. Right. Um, let's go with uh, Goodson. Uh, you talked to Goodson, Miss 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 Harris. All right, let's I go did, back. On the record. Let's go back on the record with Gray. Uh, All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.